Hi, welcome to the Film Prop channel. Today I'm going to tell you about a 1991 action movie called, Armor of God 2, Operation Condor. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and support me with a like. That way the channel will grow. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Jackie, known as the Asian Hawk, gets into a motor glider and flies over the mountains. He descends into a cave containing expensive emeralds, but as soon as he picks up the emerald, he notices the natives living in the cave sitting nearby. He tries to figure out if he can take the emeralds and asks the people, but gets an answer in their language that sounds kind of positive. After he puts the two emeralds in his backpack, he is about to draw water from the sacred spring and it makes the natives very angry. They begin to shout and call out to their fellow natives. Within seconds, the cave is filled with a crowd of natives with torches. Among them is a man who speaks Chinese. He warns Jackie that since he has drunk the water from the sacred spring, he must marry a girl from their tribe. On cue, Jackie escapes from the cave. He inflates a big balloon that looks like a hamster balloon and rolls down the mountain, driving it over the natives. Jackie got away with it as usual. Except the emeralds were missing from the bag, it was all for nothing. Jackie is fishing while sitting in his car and gets a letter faxed to him. It seems his vacation is over. He is summoned to the continent of Africa, and our hero goes there without a second thought. When he arrives there, he meets Momoko, a Japanese woman selling trinkets in the square, who asks Jackie to look after things while she is in the bathroom. He is immediately approached by a girl who wants to buy something. Jackie is not lost and successfully sells the statue to the girl. Two men see this and immediately run up to Jackie. They try to take the money from him, but our hero is not timid and takes it back, also double. Momoko returns, and Jackie hands her the money he earned. Someone calls him on his pager, and our hero runs to the car. A man tries to get into it. Jackie quickly deals with him, until a second man stops him and tells him not to fight, because the Count sent him. Together they go to the Earl's estate. He has been waiting for our hero and offers to have tea. The Count tells them that one of Africa's secret bases contains gold from World War II. The Count has decided to entrust it to Jackie because he is very dexterous. The Count introduces Jackie to the Colonels and Ada, a desert specialist, who is to take him to the secret base. Ada asks the Count whose word will be decisive in the argument between her and Jackie? The Count says he doesn't know, and Ada decides that her word will prevail. They explore all the details of the case with Jackie, but he quickly becomes distracted as soon as he sees a picture of the man who was once assigned to hide the gold. He wants to find something related to him. He goes to the house where the man lived for details, but a girl suddenly comes into the house and goes to take a shower. Jackie goes unnoticed, as usual, and is about to leave the house when a man rushes in. He throws the girl to the floor and starts threatening. Jackie, who is hidden under a sheet right behind him, pounces on the man and forces him to kiss the floor. But another man comes running in, or rather flying in through the window, but with a gun. It turns out that the girl is the granddaughter of the man who was hiding the gold. The bandits try to find out where the gold is, but she says nothing. Jackie quickly makes it clear that there is nothing for them to do here, and they leave. Our hero brings the key to the master to find out what is wrong with it. The master says that this key can only open the lock if the owner knows the secret code that the master set. On the way out, Jackie is followed again by two men, but Jackie disarms them and goes to the motorcycle. Suddenly cars appear and the chase begins. Jackie is in his usual style, dousing their car with paint grabbed from the man on the move and riding everywhere he can, making the bandits nervous and smashing their cars. One motorcycle and six cars. He pulls into a warehouse where he loses control of his motorcycle, but quickly climbs the boxes on the roof and grabs the metal beams, dodging a flying car. The chase shifts to the seaport, where Jackie climbs the ramp and grabs the cargo hanging from the crane while all the cars fall into the water. The next day, Jackie discusses his share of the gold with the Count. The Count says 1%. It seems small to Jackie, but when he finds out it's two and a half tons, he quickly changes his mind. Elsa, the granddaughter of the German officer Jackie saw yesterday, arrives at the Count's mansion. She very insistently asks to go with them because she wants to know the truth about the girl's disappearance, and despite Ada's objections, she is accepted into the group. They get in their cars and drive past beautiful scenery, bears and palm trees until finally they find themselves in the desert. They stop at a hotel, but there are already bandits standing outside, attacking Elsa and her home. Ada gets into an argument with Elsa, which ends with the latter going to her room. Ada and Jackie also decide to go to their rooms, but notice that the rooms have been searched. Ada thinks it's Elsa's doing, that she's in cahoots with the bandits and leaves to her own place. She sets traps for the bandits, but they successfully pass them. Jackie walks past Ada's room and notices the broken lock. He sneaks in after the bandits and falls for Ada's trap. 
The girl beats him up because the lights in the room are off, but when she turns them on, she sees not only that she has been beating Jackie all along, but also the bandits pointing a gun at them. They search their room again, but find nothing. A hotel worker knocks on their door and offers them chocolate to sleep on. With guns pointed at them, Jackie and Ada can't talk properly and the employee decides they need a condom. Just as Ada takes it, Elsa comes to the door and wants to talk to Ada, but she tries her best to keep her out of trouble. Elsa is offended and leaves, but quickly figures out what's what. The bandits try to beat the key and the map out of them, but find themselves beaten by Jackie. Elsa comes to their room wearing a hijab disguised as hotel staff, but she is quickly unmasked. The three of them stand against the wall, cornered, but Jackie notices the same two fools who have been chasing him since the beginning. They stand outside the window, waiting for a command to barge in. Jackie is sly and says that these are his men and they are about to break into the room. The bandits believe his words and abruptly open the doors to the balcony and the bandits fall off the balcony. Ada runs out of the room to the noise. Jackie runs after her. They toss the key to each other as well as basketball players, until the key finally gets stuck in the thatched roof. A hotel employee runs up to Elsa and sells her a machine gun. She doesn't know how to use it at all and shoots the whole hotel, but still scares the bandits away. In the afternoon the bandits come to the hotel, trying to get on the trail of Jackie and his company, but the scoundrels come too late, they left already in the morning. Jackie himself meets a Japanese girl, Momoko, who has been selling in the square. She joins the company. At night their camp is attacked by bandits on camels, who nevertheless manage to get on their trail. They are clearly taking numbers, but Jackie proves to be more cunning. He takes Momoko, a hand scorpion, and pretends to be mortally bitten. The bandits believe him, but the scorpion dies anyway. That leaves only Jackie and Momoko, who were cunning enough to hide. They are going to free the others. Elsa and Ada have already been auctioned off and sold for 150 camels. Jackie disguises himself as a rich man and tries to rescue the girls, but he is immediately discovered. At this time, Momoko rushes to them in a car and they drive away, taking cover from the gunshots of the bandits. The remaining people in the camp are killed by the bandits. Jackie and the girls flee into the desert but run into those two stupid bandits again. They threaten them with guns and hold them captive. They are overcome with thirst, but Jackie cheats again. His water was inside his vest, and a tube is attached to his mouth so that he doesn't have to open the flask every time. He pretends to hug the girls and let them drink. But the bandits are quick to figure it out, though. When the bandits lead them to the treasure site, Jackie takes the map from them and throws them off the sand mountain, throwing them water one last time. Jackie and the girls return to camp and see the dead bodies. They gather their strength and head for that very German base, saying goodbye to Momoko. They quickly arrive at the site and carefully look around, slowly making their way inside. But, of course, they are not alone there. A spear from an unknown man flies a millimeter away from Jackie. Jackie and her team try to escape, but are stumped. Men with spears are advancing from everywhere. Jackie deftly deals with the natives and shows them his mastery of the spear. They drop their weapons and perform a strange dance. Ada says it is called the reconciliation dance and that they should join in. Jackie and the girls dance along with them and the rest of the natives begin to come out of everywhere. Our hero quickly figures out that this is not a reconciliation, but a call for help. At the end of the dance, they throw spears at them, which means they certainly didn't mean to make peace. Jackie runs away, but notices that they have stopped and are clapping. It turns out there is quicksand ahead of them, which they all manage to get into. They fall somewhere in the dungeon right into the place of the skeleton. Momoko meets gold hunters along the way and notices her necklace on one of them. Elsa, meanwhile, finds her grandfather. Or rather his skeleton with a knife in its back. Not far away lies her grandfather's diary, in which she learns the code to the door with the gold, and that grandfather had to poison 18 of his comrades, but there are only 17 skeletons, so where is one? At this point, gold hunters burst into the cave along with Momoko. At the head of the hunters is an old German, confined to a wheelchair. The same man who turned out to be smarter and did not take the poison from Elsa's grandfather. His name is carved on the knife that was stuck in Grandpa Elsa's side. The bandits point their guns at our hero, but he manages to get away from them. Because of the pitch black they manage to hide for a while, but the bandits turn on the power generator. The girls almost get killed, but Jackie quietly sneaks up on one of the villains and takes his weapon. It was a mistake to trust the weapon to Elsa, she lost control of it as usual and left Jackie's team without an advantage. Once again, everything falls on Jackie's amazingly deft shoulders. As much as he takes out the bandits, what tools he uses. The bandits should have run away, but they keep advancing in countless hordes. The girls find helmets and put them on their heads, helping Jackie in the fight. But he gets distracted by them and loses his grip. 
They ask for the key, and Jackie has to give it up, for the sake of saving their lives. The bandits lead them to the entrance. As the two villains go to enter the code, they are killed by guns coming out of the ceiling because the code was wrong. The bandits send Jackie and the girls to send the code next. They guess the code from the door by their grandfather's locket. If they unwrap it, the numbers add up to 698. It works, but it's not all that obvious. Behind the door hides another door. Pulling the handles, Jackie opens the second door. Inside turns out to be an elevator that leads them down to the base. In each box lie large deposits of gold. And right at the end of the hallway lie gold bars. Jackie pretends to enjoy the gold with the bandits and takes a gun from one of them. He points it at a German and threatens to shoot him, but no one cares about him anymore, they don't need him anymore. Why share the wealth with an angry old man in a wheelchair? The rest of the bandits quickly pick up the initiative and call Jackie up to find the rest of the gold. The old man seizes the moment and closes the doors to the bunker. Jackie is trapped with the two bandits in the airplane test room. The girls upstairs try to free him, but every lever movement could be decisive, because right behind them is a huge propeller that could shred them to pieces. They mishandle the lever and Jackie and the bandits almost end up right inside the meat grinder. But at the last second they stop the madness, but instead they start the self-destruction process. Adolphus gets involved and helps Jackie, because he knows what levers to pull to make Jackie win. And so Jackie, like Superman, literally flies and strips the bandits until they are finally overboard. His plan is to make his way out through the vent before the base is blown to pieces. Adolphus uses the levers with the vent and sacrifices himself to help our hero and his friends. They bring some of the gold with them, but some of it spills out before they're even shipped out. So, Adolphus sends them out through the vent, and he explodes with the bunker. Their gold is gone, because they couldn't carry a piece of it with them, and everything else turns out to have been piled up. The company runs through the desert until they run into those same stupid bandits, but they don't want gold, they just want water. Jackie invites them on a joint search for water.